so uh, as we all know normally we have uh, time of sharing uh, uh, every sunday before after the worship so because it is a special sunday where all the three uh, all of our elders are out of station they are in india attending the conference uh, which is going to start next week so the elders have asked uh, uh, four of us to share to keep things simple for us who are leading the meeting uh, so since it's not going to be open time of sharing uh, if you have come prepared um, i would uh, encourage you to uh, wait until uh, elders come back during the normal meeting but uh, uh, so uh, the elders have asked four of us to uh, pre- come prepared to uh, come and share uh, the things that uh, god has been teaching them in their lives and uh, one thing uh, it has been more than a year since i joined the church one thing that has been a blessing uh, as part of the church service is the time of sharing where we see how god has been working uh, in each one's lives and that encourages us to walk with him it's not a theory thing it's not some uh, standard thing that we listen but god working in their lives so that's what encourages us to follow god more closely so that has been a very blessing personally to me and so today uh, so paul and uh, uh, brother paul son linda and myself will share and um, uh, so i just want to read this verse from uh, first corinthians chapter 14 uh, it says like one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself but one who prophesies edifies the church so keep this in mind that when we prophesy when we speak the words of prophecy we are building the church we are edifying the church and paul encourages us to covet the gift of prophecy so uh, as we as we share keep these things in mind uh, seek the uh, gift seek this gift of prophecy that we may build others it's not for me uh, it's for others for my church so um, uh, so this is something that we can bring uh, to share to others so what god has been uh, blessing us with and we are sharing with others so having said this uh, i would request uh, paul son Linda in that order to come and uh, share with the church what God has been teaching you that it may be a blessing to all of us just want to share a couple of concrete i believe faith that God gave me throughout the week through my home uh through work Uh, just words that he is building my faith on and uh, it was so good to hear his voice but um, a couple of those words will be out of what Zach shared last week um, one of them is John 1:18 how he it says no one has ever seen God at any time the only begotten God who God who is in the bosom of the father he Jesus has explained him when he was on earth and he lived among us jesus is the only one who has seen god he is the only one who can explain god perfectly and so I, i've never and and he uh, zach said this too but i've never seen god so it just encouraged me to be careful when i read the word and when i apply things when i speak to my brothers and sisters to be careful because jesus was with god he can explain who god is i know in part i see myself in part and uh it was just a good reminder to be careful not to stop but to lord you've really given me a word of change that's where i want to be and, and so these are words i'm sure with you and this is a man it was a guy 75 years old and walking seriously with jesus for 50 50 to 60 years um to hear him say that after he's speaking uh thank you for listening to my babblings and I'm like if you're babbling what am i doing <laughs> you know So I appreciate that humility and it was a good encouragement for me. He also spoke on Mark 7 uh 24 through 30. I'm going to share the other account that's in Matthew, Matthew 15 21 through uh, 28 about the Syrophoenician woman, the Canaanite woman. Matthew 15 21 through 28 says, Jesus went away from there, that is Galilee or Gennesaret and withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon. Now he he spoke about Tyre and Sidon is 30 miles away. There was no bikes, cars. It was 30 mile walk. He went to Tyre. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and began to cry out saying, "Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly demon-possessed." 
But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and implored him, saying, Send her away, because she keeps shouting at us. But Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, he tells her. And she kept going. She said, and she bowed down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he said, he still says, it is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs. But she says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs pick up the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, O oh woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed. So that's why I want to speak some of the things about faith. So after reading this story a few times and asking the Lord to speak to me, I, God it told me God helps us when we agree with him of our unworthiness. And so after hearing tough things from Jesus, right? I mean, to be called a dog from anybody is horrible. But from Jesus, from God, obviously he was testing her. He already proved his love. He walked 30 miles for her. That's a test there. He loved her already. It was already clear. She didn't know that. But he was testing her faith. And so there she still says, verse 27, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from their master's table. To me, she was saying, Lord, I don't deserve your help, but I'm willing to take whatever it is you give me, even if it's some crumbs. And I said, boy, what an attitude to have to him. Good or bad, I'll take from you, Lord, just like Job, right? He rent his clothes and he said, I came from the womb. Whatever it is, Lord, bring it. If, if I didn't know better, Jesus seemed kind of rude here. Verse 23, he didn't answer a word. Disciples annoyed, asking, Jesus, send her away. This whole context seems totally unloving. If we were to be in this situation and to treat somebody like this, who are these church people? <laughs> who are these, you know? And, uh, but she didn't let that detract her from saying, Jesus, you can help me and you will help me. Doesn't matter whatever you say to me. And so, and obviously this wasn't about physical bread and physical crumbs, right? It's, it's to me it was, nothing was going to get in the way of her faith in Jesus to help her. And I said, I can learn something from that. <laughs> Keep persisting in prayer to him. Lord, you will help me. Jesus walked 30 miles for her, for her and to heal her daughter. But he went to the cross for the believer. And I said, I thought, surely I can have faith, Lord, for you to help me. Whatever it is I'm facing on a daily basis. So there's strong encouragement in this story for me. So, And then lastly, just on my own, God has really been bringing this verse in the last couple of weeks. And it's Hebrews 3, uh, 12 and 13, and then Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. And I'll finish up with this. Continuing with encouragement. Uh, as we heard out of 1 Corinthians 14, one of the things of prophecy is we ought to encourage each other, exhort. Um, it says, take care, brethren. This is a word to Christians and to believers. Take care that there not be in any of you an unbelieving, evil heart that falls away from the living God. And this wasn't a condemning word. And he says, but encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that you, why? So that you will not be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And the words that kept standing out to me there was day after day. And I know that some of us are in situations that it's difficult. You can't go and visit somebody. And that, I don't think that's the heart here. It's the heart of maybe it's an email, maybe it's a text, maybe it's prayer for someone. But it's a, a daily encouragement that, yes, I sit before God and I worship Him and He I walk with him through the day to ask him to feed me, to help me to see my sin. But it's also with my brothers and sisters, when I sit before them and I hear them talking about sitting before God on their own throughout the week, my sin gets uh, revealed and I get convicted. And they don't even necessarily are saying, hey, you need to fix that. <laughs> They're not saying that. They're just in, uh, saying what God is changing them. And I say, oh, God, where am I? You know. And so it's a wonderful thing. I mean, to be stuck in deceitfulness of sin and not have that light, that is 
darkness. I don't want that. So take care. Even as believers, we can have an evil, unbelieving heart. So there was a practical thought I've been thinking every week and uh, helping us be, uh, from stubborn uh, stubbornness against sin. So it was the day after day in Hebrews 10, 24, 25, finishing up on this, it says, let us consider how we may stimulate one another to love and to good deeds, not forsaking ourselves assembling together as some is in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as we see the day of Christ coming back. So I was so helped this past week. I met, I met with several brothers um, this past week, and I tell you in Jesus' name, it was so rich. And so I'm so grateful for it. The prayer that we had together, the fellowship, it changed my week. It changed my week because it changed my heart. <laughs> God did it through them. It helped me believe God more because I saw faith being worked out in their situations too. <laughs> Some of you know that I have a um, side project, which code name is uh, Free the Hubbies. Um, it came from the desire to be more available for God's work and family, because uh, I, well, most of us spend so much time and energy at the workplace. Um, so I will struggle with this, and this was a kind of side project to, to address it. Um, as body parts of NCCF, we are trying to build a church together. Although the goal is very different, the emotions that I experienced were sometimes similar in that process. I'm learning personal spiritual lessons during this season. In fact, the stress of starting a business and raising three small kids at the same time exposed and amplified the weak spots that I thought I overcome in the past. So I'll begin sharing with just one lesson um, that I've been going through. Uh, it's about anxiety. <laughs> a few years ago, I had a burden to focus on overcoming anxiety, and I think I've shared this with you about two years ago. Because I was going through much anxiety and learned that it was a sin back at the time, and it really bothered me. I was uh, stressed from work and life, and on top of that, I was um, stressed by the fact that I had a stress, <laughs> the anxiety. <laughs> so it's a double whammy stress. <laughs> um, so I attributed to, well, back then, uh, a few years ago, I tribute becoming a new dad. This is 2009. So, um, becoming uh, basically fresh out of grad school and having a title of professor, but in, very insecure because I didn't know more than the students and had to uh, teach them. And also mostly moving to a foreign land, which is Japan, where I didn't know the language that well. Um, at the times, Sandeep and Laura, and we've been meeting for two years, and we had other families who began meeting with us, including Paul and Naomi at the time. So we dearly wanted to be with the, the growing family. It wasn't a church at the time, but God had a different plan for us. He sent us to Japan to um, break our pride and mainly to teach us to be dependent only upon Him. So back then, when I was studying anxiety, I learned something interesting, useful, um, that worrying is a survival mechanism that God has built in us, in our brains. So our brain has many parts. We have the prefrontal cortex, which is the logical side, right? Where we decision-making, planning, um, those things are performed. And then there's the center part within our brain called the limbic system. The limbic system, and specifically a small portion of our brain called amygdala, performs a primary role in our irrational decision-making and uh, <laughs> emotional reactions for survival, basically what we call flesh. Um, and this is where the emotions of warring naturally occurs. So instantly, this is also where our reproducibility desire, uh, anger, and arousal usually happens. So I learned back then that, that warring in itself is not bad. But in fact, it's a very necessary um, trait that God had designed in us, in the brain. Just as God has designed the um, reproducibility desire, rep sexual desire for us to reproduce and build a family, God made warring 
part of us to protect us from harm so that we can be alert and be prepared for an emergency. Now the problem begins when um, the limbic system or the flesh takes over. Just like the sexual desire can turn into lust, warring can turn into anxiety. It's when we let the flesh take over the spirit. So I am tempted every day by Satan to let a healthy worry turn into anxiety. So I'm reminded of a story um, in Samuel, 1 Samuel 15. Remember that King Saul um, was commissioned by Samuel to destroy everything in Amalek for what they did to Israel in the past. However, Saul spared King Agag and the best of the sheep and oxen and the fat animals and the lambs and all that was good and were not willing to destroy them completely. Um, but only the things he thought were despisable and worthless. So in the end, Samuel said, uh, of course, uh, rebuked him and regretted, God regretted that he turned into king. You know, in Saul's eyes and in my eyes, sometimes these things are good things uh, and creatures of God has given us. Um, but there is a time when God doesn't want us to take it. These good gifts come under certain conditions. However, for Saul, the lure of God's creation was bigger than that of the creator. Um, he gave into the flesh of temptation, disobeyed the Lord. So 1 Samuel 15, 22 says, To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. So every morning, um, I wake up around 2 a.m. to work at Denny's. Not at Denny's, but I work at Denny's. <laughs> um, at that dark time, uh, my tired mind uh, can wander into many places. And I wonder, will this extra work pay off? Should I give up? Well, and sometimes, why isn't our church growing? Um, why is God not bringing a sister for Brother Wenhai or Vic? Um, then I realized that this is the time to worship, not just to sing praises, but to obey, to not turn the healthy worry that God has put in me to into sinful anxiety. And there will always be temptations um, to turn um, the sexual desire to lust, to turn inconvenience into complaining or murmuring, to turn an upset feeling into anger, and to turn worry into anxiety. Um, in Romans 12.2, There is uh, that famous verse that we memorize, you know, be trans that be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's the spiritual service of worship. So with that verse, I've started to condemn myself. It's all in me. <laughs> How come I'm giving into this temptation? Um, so this was such a heavy burden for some time. Um, but God, I learned this week that God gave a great saving grace. So if you continue with verse 3 in chapter 12 of Romans, um, it says, To get grace, we need humility, recognizing God gave me a certain measure of faith. Um, so for through the God has given me, um, and he has only allotted each a measure of faith to each person. So I can overcome this temptation. But the grace doesn't stop there. Continue to verse 4 and 6. And I'll just paraphrase it. On chapter 4, I mean verse 4 and 6. Uh, I want to highlight one verse, which is number 6. According to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise accordingly. But on verse 4, for justice, we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, individual members of one, an one of another. Meaning that we don't have to go through this alone and we do this through our fellowship um, you need to remind me <laughs> and encourage me <laughs> um, through our sharing time um, through serving cleaning up toilets uh, after service is over setting up chairs taking out the trash setting up the audio video preparing for music during the week um, teaching and kids and exhorting through text emails phone calls coffee meetups meals and so forth and that's what verse 4 was all about, that I missed that part of the fellowship, that we are all members of the same body. And we all play a part in helping each other um, to not fall, to make worrying into anxiety. Um, so if I fall into anxiety or sin, it's 
because that I did not have enough humility and grace and also did not depend also on um, the body as well and vice versa. So, so I hope that we, our family can together overcome anxiety and keep healthy worries in its place. Thank you. morning. Wow, everything we sang and, and those who have shared, it's like it's building on what the Lord has been teaching me. Um, I just want to read a couple of scriptures, a couple of verses from Psalm 139. Start. Um, verses 17 and 18. How precious also are thy thoughts to me, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. And then verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there be any hurtful way in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. So I've been praying about um, receiving and taking in all the blessings that were written on, uh, and hung on the wishing tree at my party. It's really hard to receive and believe words that were written. And I'm pretty sure that most of us don't believe how others see us in the Lord or how the Lord even sees us or how he's made us. And um, while I was thinking about this today, part of the devotional that I read today was this. Open your mind and heart, your entire being, to receive my love in full measure. So many of my children limp through their lives starved for love because they haven't learned the art of receiving. This is essentially an act of faith Believing that I love you with boundless, everlasting love. And I thought, wow. I mean, okay. <laughs> um, so this is a, has been a real stretching thing for me. Um, and I remembered that Sandeep was talking about the root of righteousness. And in Matthew 3.10, John the Baptist said that the Lord was ready with his axe to cut the root of the trees that do not bear fruit. So also please remember that the Lord told me that the root of envy in me can only die um, if I receive his love and abide in his love. So I was praying the other night about it and said to the Lord that I wasn't aware of him doing anything, you know, that nothing had changed. I didn't feel any changes in my, my heart, but I know that he was doing something because I trust him. So you know what he told me? As I receive and allow all the words of love and the notes on the tree to go inside, oops, which is really his love, that the root of envy will die the more I receive your love and his love in me. So I want to thank you all for loving me. And when I look at you, I can just feel that love. Thank you. So many of you know that I love the ocean. During a quiet time on the rocks, I was sitting by the water's edge. And the water was coming really near me. The Lord spoke to me, and he said that I love the ocean, me, because it's huge and a big expanse, and it's, it is constant as it flows back and forth, just like God always there, steadfast and faithful. The Holy Spirit showed me that the tides are like life. When the tide is low, you can see <clears throat> on the sand things that you wouldn't ordinarily see. Um, 
when the tide is high. <clears throat> There's all kinds of little creatures exposed. Some are kind of yucky, some are interesting, and some are treasures. Some of these little morsels, I believe I have all this stuff here, <clears throat> are exposed for the birds to eat, to supply them with nourishment, like his word nourishes us when the Holy Spirit sheds light on a scripture. Some of these sea creatures are left behind to die because they cannot get back into the water once the tide goes out. He showed me that sins are like that. And as, uh, and like Paul said, uh, he count, you know, we should count them as rubbish, the good things and the bad things, and that we must die to them in order to grow closer to the Lord. Some things are in the sand that make us sad to see because they're beautiful or, and a treasure. Those will die too, because everything has its season. Some treasures we can pick up and hold. In the midst of a trial or suffering, God gives us treasures or blessings to give us hope to go on. We must stay alert, not go into the sea where the undertow is, because the undertow, <clears throat> which, uh, because if we do that, it would be like testing God and going back to places we've already died to. Envy. The undertow can pull us down and back into our old ways. The tide comes in and washes the beach clean. Again, it's just like the Lord uh, when he cleanses us when we repent. And he washes us with his word. When the tide is high, it's our blessing time. and We can rest in the water as the Lord holds us in his arms. Um, so, just loved it that the Lord shared that with me because of my love for the ocean and that he just showed me all those things. And I just want to leave you with one of my favorite passages. And my prayer is for all of us for this. It's in Philippians 5, 23 and 24. May the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly. And may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved sound and blameless until the coming of the Lord. For he who called you is faithful, and he will bring it to pass. Amen. Thank you. So as I was preparing uh, about what I need to share today, uh, so I just looked at my own life, uh, the things, little things God has been teaching me over the past few weeks uh, that I wanted to uh, share with you. So uh, as part of uh, my daily reading, I was reading Isaiah <clears throat> chapter 42. Uh, I came across this verse, verse 20. Uh, it says in King James, Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. So I generally read King James and uh, I also read uh, New Living Translation. Uh, so one is word to word and another one totally paraphrased. So in the paraphrased version it says, You see and recognize what is right, but refuse to act on it. You hear with your ears, but you really don't listen. So I was thinking about this verse. Uh, yeah, many times I think I am like this. I see and recognize what needs to be done, but I don't act. And I hear with my ears, but I really don't listen. So I was thinking last week and for the past several weeks, uh, we have been listening to such wonderful messages from Brother Zayak and even from our elders and through the time of sharing from this pulpit. <clears throat> I feel that we are so privileged to hear those truths, especially the truths of the New Covenant. I don't think many, even many Christians have this access uh, and, uh, to, this, uh, to these sermons, I mean, opportunity to listen to these truths. Uh, victory over sin and balance of truth, avoiding the extreme. I mean, there are so many things. Nobody, I have never seen uh, people preaching on anger, never before. I mean, these are the things that uh, 
so important and so 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 many truths we are getting an opportunity to listen but i i observe that i have a tendency to lose sensitivity if uh, sensitivity to those truths in a sense if you keep on listening to the same thing again and again it can become like you know a routine okay i know this i know this what's new kind of thing rather than acting on that uh, taking every uh, exhortation seriously uh, and otherwise i become my my ears can become dull and i i don't act on it and what is the point i mean i get, i i eat lot of food but it is not getting digested it's all in my head it is not coming into my heart and i know i will be more accountable than when compared to the people who don't get chance to the, listen to the truths what what if god asked me in the final day what did you, what did you do with all, all the truths so i i want to tremble at his word and i want to my desire is like every exhortation that god is giving to me i want to take it really seriously and not allow it to pass if god convicts me of my sin even if it is a minor offense be quick to repent and be cleansed let the tide come and wash it away that we will be clean again L- let me not carry that burden of sin anymore even i mean i was so i mean god is so concerned about us last week also when uh, when i was disturbed with something i mean multiple times god spoke to me at the, at the same point and it was really to me and as soon as god convicted me he, he observed that how what is going on in our heart and as soon as he convicts us about it when we quickly repent and uh, we restore our fellowship with him Uh, so may we never become um, uh, insensitive to the truths and always always be ready to act that we not not only hear but also listen carefully that whatever goes to our mind goes to our heart to by uh, obeying the truths that we are listening and um, also last week <coughs> i was also uh, we were uh, personally we were going through some of the uh, like we we had to make few decisions Um, a lot of things happened in, in the sense that uh, that my mind was focused on all of that and much of my attention has gone into that uh, as i shared uh, before i mean uh, about the memory uh, during uh, memory uh, verse time uh, that we can set our mind on either things of this earth or things of this world uh, or we can be disturbed with the things that are happening around us uh, in the earthly sense in the sense we can maybe because of health or losing job or losing money or something or we can be disturbed because our fellowship with god has broken or our spiritual life is not going as as we want as god desires us to be uh, so i was thinking what is disturbing me most what is i mean i mean am i being disturbed or uh, because something is happening in the uh, material sense in the earthly sense or am i being disturbed if something is happening in the spiritual uh, area of my life <laughs> Uh, are i am becoming excited because i am getting some profit or gain or some earthly benefit or uh, i mean what is giving me uh, much joy uh, is it earthly or spiritual so uh, we we have been reading this philippians chapter 3 uh, paul considers everything rubbish i think uh, that's one thing that uh, tells me that secret of his uh, service to god that he considers everything rubbish he even though he lived on this earth he never get got attached like jesus he had enough uh things that to meet his earthly needs but he never was attached so i was praying that no matter what god provides what god gives to us in this uh in this life maybe job or house or children or any any earthly blessing like we should i don't want to be attached in a sense i don't want to love it uh love this earthly things more than uh more than god let this never come uh, if at all i pray god like if at all these earthly things come between you and me take it all take all of them i, I don't mind. i want you i want you i heard like um, one of the brother was sharing that when he uh, when he purchased home or something like uh, he was doing the first day when they were entering he said he prayed like this god if it ever comes if i get attached to the house if i ever get attached i get attached to this thing burn it up i don't want i want i want my love for you to to be constant let let this earthly things never come between you and me and also uh when we make this de- decisions about lot of things about our, uh, our normal life what is influencing me i mean my spiritual life should influence the earthly things not the other way around the way i am walking with god should influence the decisions that i make and not uh, the earthly things should determine how i am walking with god in the sense 
the reason I am uh, saying that because when I my all my attention is taken away with all these things, I I may I'm spending less time with God. I'm uh, because these earthly things are are influencing my walk with God. It should be the other way around. My walk with God should determine how I live in this earth, how I should be detached. So uh, whenever they rob me of my uh, communion with God, or time I spend with Him, I should check my life. What, what is dominating my life? Um, so I think Jeremy shared a few weeks ago that his prayer was, make spiritual more real to me than physical. I, 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 I also, I, I was touched with that statement. I used to pray like that. Make spiritual more real to me. Uh, not not that the things that we see uh, are going to disappear one day, but the things that are not seen, the spiritual things, are going to last. So, uh, I, I and also in uh, Psalmist says right, uh, Psalm eight says, even if the riches increase, do not set your mind on them. So all these things, I mean, in the earthly sense, whatever may happen to us, that it never excites us. If I get uh, you know some unexpected gain or something. Never be excited about, or if God takes away something, even don't be discouraged. As long as our, my mind is set on things about, uh, all these things should not either excite us or disturb us, uh, because <clears throat> we are we are beholding God. Uh, as Psalmist, I have set the Lord before me always, because He is at my right hand, I shall never be moved. Um, so, uh, these are the thoughts that I <coughs> wanted to share. And so since uh, we have more time, because there is no teaching time, Sandeep is not here. So what uh, the way we wanted to have the service is like, we already had worship, now it's time of sharing. Now we'll have some more time for worship. So we'll sing a few more songs. Uh, I request musicians to come. And since this is a family meeting, like if you have any favorite songs, maybe we can, I think musicians can, if you want to sing some songs. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, uh, let's not make it very formal, but yeah, if if, uh, if you want to uh, sing along with all of us with some song that you have in mind, maybe we can also sing that. But uh, let's let's uh, uh, fix our thoughts upon our Lord and uh, sing songs. <laughs>